Hey there Seahawks, it's Miss Adams, and in this video we're going to talk about random variables and probability distributions. Alright, so random variables have two types, discrete random variables and continuous random variables. In a discrete random variable we can list all the outcomes, um, so they're only certain, certain values, right? So an example would be um, if you roll a die, the number of heads and three coin tosses, um, the number of children in a family. So there's no decimals or anything like that. They're all whole numbers. Continuous random variables are outcomes are in an interval and we cannot list all of the possibilities. Um, so it can be any value in a range. So the number of hours a light bulb lasts before burning out, it could last like 103.76 hours, right? Time to run a mile. So this is broken down into seconds, milliseconds, right? So there's fractional parts, so it's continuous random variable. The basics. A random variable assumes a value based on the outcome of a random event. We use the capital letters to denote random variables, and then when we're finding the probabilities of like a specific one, we use the lowercase. A probability model for a random variable consists of the collection of all possible values of that random variable and the probability that that value occurs. The expected value of a discrete random variable can be found by summing the products of each possible value by the probability that it occurs. All right, so it's each value, like its outcome, times its probability, plus the next value times its probability, and so on. This gives you the expected value, which is also the mean. Uh, for data, we calculate the standard deviation by first computing the deviation from the mean and squaring it. Um, we do that with discrete random variables as well. So variance is I would take each value minus the mean, square it, times it by its probability, plus the next value minus the mean squared times its probability. So that gives me the variance, which is the standard deviation squared. So to get the standard deviation, we take the square root of the variance. All right, we can transform random variables by adding and subtracting or multiplying and dividing a constant to our um, random variable. So if I add or subtract a constant, it's going to shift my data over, right? So it's going to affect the mean by whatever that constant is. So if I shift it, I added 5 to everything, my mean is going to increase by 5. But because I'm just shifting it, it is not getting any more spread out. Remember that standard deviation and variance are measures of spread. So my variance and standard deviation will be unaffected by um, adding or subtracting a constant. Multiplying each value of the random variable by a constant multiplies the mean by that constant and the variance by the square of that constant. All right, so um, the expected value or the mean will be multiplied by whatever that constant is. The variance will be uh, multiplied by that constant squared and the standard deviation will be multiplied by that constant. All right. uh, two random variables. So the mean of the sum or difference of two random variables is the sum or difference of the mean. So if I have two random variables and I want to combine them, I just add their expected values or their means together. Um, if the random variables are independent, the variance of their sum or difference is always the sum of the variances. Okay, so when I'm trying to get combine the standard deviations or their measures of spread, I add the variances. It's always going to be adding, um, whether it's addition or subtracting, whether I'm adding the random variables or subtracting them. It's always going to be adding um, because it's increasing the spread. Uh, the standard deviation is the square root of the sum of the standard deviation squared. So I'm going to square them, add them, square root them if I'm combining two random variables for their standard deviations. I'm going to take their standard deviations, square them, add them, and then square root them. All right, if you're doing this in a calculator, you're going to put all of your um, outcomes in list one. You're going to put all the probabilities of those outcomes in list two. You're going to stat, calc, one var stats, list one, list two. You're going to put list two in as your frequency list. And then mean would be x bar, standard deviation would be sigma. Uh, and then e x is the expected value, which is the same as mu x, which is the mean. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance, um, which is the square root of the standard deviation squared. So. Our first example, let's play a game. You pay $5 to play. In the game, 
you get to draw one card from a standard 52 card deck. If you draw the Ace of Hearts, you win $100. If you draw any other Ace, you win $10. If you draw any other Heart, you win $5. Any other card, you win nothing. We are interested in the amount you can, amount that you gain, right? Um, so you paid to play, so you're not gaining $100. If you win $100, you're only getting $95. Create a probability distribution. So x will be the values of the variable, the outcomes, and p of x is the probability of that outcome occurring. So I could win $100, but because I paid $5 to play, it'd be $95. I have $5 I could gain, $0 gain, or a negative $5 gain. Um, the probability to winning the 95 or gaining $95 is I have to get an ace of hearts. Well, there's only one ace of hearts out of 52 cards in the deck. The rest would be all other hearts. Well, I have one um, heart, no, one ace, I'm sorry. One ace is accounted for, so I have three other aces. Then hearts, I have 13 hearts, but I used one of those already, so 12 out of 52. And then um, the rest would be 36 out of 52. All right. So this is the same probability distribution here. What is the chance that you go home with at least some money? So at least some money means that X was greater than zero. Right. So I could get gain $95, which is a 1 in 52 chance, plus $5, which was a 3 out of 52 probability which gives me a 4 out of 52 probability or chance of going home with some money. Um, what is the chance that you gain at least $10? So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10, that you gain at least $10, is only 1 out of 52. There's only one option where you gained more than $10, at least $10. So this would be the same thing as the probability that x equals 95. What is the probability of not gaining any money? All right, so the probability that x is less than or equal to 0 would be 12 out of 52 plus the 36 out of 52, or 48 out of 52. I could get nothing, or I could lose $5. All right, find the mean and expected value and standard deviation. So I have my probability distribution. If I want to find the mean or the expected value, I'm going to take each, prob each outcome times its probability, plus the next outcome times its probability, plus the next outcome times its probability. All right, I get 2.93. If I wanted to find the standard deviation, I take each value minus the mean, square it, times it by its probability, plus the next value minus the mean, squared, times its probability, and so on. All right, if I don't want to do that the long way, I could put these um, the probability distribution into my calculator, so x... Uh, would go into list one, p of x would go into list two. We do stat calc one bar stats. Um, my x list would be list one, and then my frequency list would be list two. And I'm looking for um, x bar and s and uh, sigma. What is the expected value or mean and standard deviation of the example from problem number one? So this was your turn. So pause, see if you can figure this out with your calculator. Right. You should have gotten negative uh, $1.35 and then standard deviation of $13.80. All right, a new game. We are rolling a die. We are again interested in the amount gained. It costs $5 to play. So roll a 6, you win $10. Roll a 5, you win $7. Roll a 3 or a 4, you win $5. Roll a 1 or a 2, you win nothing. Create a probability distribution and find the expected value and standard deviation of the game. All right, so my probability distribution, my outcomes for gains. Again, I paid $5 to play, so I could win. I could gain $5. I could gain $2, no dollars, or negative $5. The probability of rolling a 6 is 1 out of 6. Probability of rolling a 5 is 1 out of 6. Probability of rolling a 3 or a 4 is 2 out of 6, and a 1 or a 2 is 2 out of 6. So here's my probability distribution. Then I can plug that into my calculator, list 1, list 2, stat, calc, 1 bar, stats. Uh, list 2 would be my frequency list. 
and I get a expected value or mean of negative 50 cents and a standard deviation of $3.59. All right, random variable x has a mean of 6.2 and a standard deviation of 3.1. Find the new mean and standard deviation if we multiply by 3. All right, so the mu of 3x would be 3 times my mean. All right, so if I multiply by 3, I'm going to multiply my mean by 3, which would give me 18.6. The standard deviation of 3x would be 3 times my standard deviation, which would be 9.1. So multiplying by a constant changes both the mean and the standard deviation. Find the new mean and standard deviation if we subtract 10. All right, so if I subtract 10, I'm going to take my mean, subtract 10, I'm going to get negative 3.8. With my standard deviation, if I subtract 10, it's just shifting things over. Um, so each value will be 10 less, but my standard deviation, my measure of spread, will be unchanged. So it will remain at 3.1. Find the new mean and standard deviation if we multiply by 5 and add 10. All right, so I know that um, multiplying by 5 is going to affect both the mean and the standard deviation. Adding 10 is only going to affect the mean. So I'm going to multiply my mean by 5, and then I'm going to add 10 to it, which is going to give me 41. Uh, for my standard deviation, I'm only going to multiply my standard deviation by 5. The plus 10 is not going to uh, change the standard deviation because it's just shifting it. Random variable y has a mean of 3.4 and a standard deviation of 1.4. Find the mean and standard deviation of x plus y. So now I'm combining these random variables. So remember for random variable x, I had a mean of 6.2 and a standard deviation of 3.1. So when I add them together, I'm just going to add the mean. 6.2 plus 3.4 gives me 9.6. For the standard deviations, I'm going to square them, add them, square root them. So square them, add them, then square root them, and I get 3.401. All right, if I subtract... I'm going to subtract my means, I get 2.8. With my standard deviation, even though I'm subtracting, I'm always going to square them, add them, square root them. All right, so square them, add them, square root them. I get 3.401. Find the mean and standard deviation of 2x plus 3y. So this time I'm combining, uh, transforming, and combining random variables together. So I'm going to take my mean of x, multiply it by 2, my mean of y, multiply it by 3, and then add those together, which gives me 22.6. For the standard deviation, it does change my multiplying, so I am going to have to multiply those pieces. So I'm going to do 2 times 3.1, square them, add them, square root them, and 3 times 1.4. So I'm multiplying them, then I'm squaring them, adding them, square rooting them. All right, you may want to do that in multiple steps instead of just all in one piece. Uh, so we get 7.489. Find the mean and standard deviation of 3x plus y minus 4. All right. So for the mean, I'm doing all of the pieces, right? So I'm going to take the mean of x, multiply by 3, uh, add the mean of y, and then subtract a constant of 4, which gives me 18. For the standard deviation, I am going to multiply by 3, and I am going to add the y, and then I'm squaring them, adding them, and square rooting them. So I'm doing 3 times my x standard deviation, square that, plus my y standard deviation squared, and then square root them, and I get 9.405. All right, your turn. A new game, a single die is rolled, and the following occurs. You roll a 6, you get 40 points. You roll a 4 or a 5, you get 10 points. You roll a 1, 2, or 3, you get 0 points. Write a probability distribution and then find the mean and standard deviation of the game. So pause and try it. All right, you should have gotten a probability distribution. You could get 40 points, there's a 1 in 6 chance. 10 points, there's a 2 in 6 chance. 0 points, a 3 in 6 chance. The mean was 10 points. The standard deviation was 14.142 points. Um, suppose the points are doubled. Find the new mean and standard deviation. So to double would mean to multiply by 2. So mu of 2x would be 2 times my mean before, which is 20 points. The standard deviation does change by multiplying. 
so I can just multiply my standard deviation, 2 times 14.142. I'll have to do all of the squaring and then square rooting, but... Um, suppose that the new game is played twice independently. What is the mean and standard deviation of this? All right, so it's 10 and 10, the means two times, right? X plus X is 20 points. Standard deviation of X plus X, I'm going to square them, add them, square root them, I get 20 points. All right, go Seahawks.